Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, it's Talkie Box Podcast. You're in good hands with Talkie Box. Oh. These hands. These <laughs> hands. Yeah. Those? Yeah, that's that's my uh, rock monster from yeah, Never Ending Story. Story. Yeah. Great movie. Great book, mm. actually. Didn't read it. No? Did watch it, though. I've got it. You can read it sometime if you want. Sure. You'll never he give me that one. book back. I'm not going to give you the book back. No. Or I'm read not it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> he'll take it. It'll sit somewhere and he'll never read it. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to Talkie Box. Uh, I'm Dave. Uh, with me, as usual, Jason. Not saying anything for the audio podcast. Great job. Justin. They know I'm here. You call hey. me. Hey. And then, uh, new face, Jeremy. Howdy. It's a brand new face. Brand new face. This is a guy yesterday, fresh very, out of the oven. Yeah, this now is, this very, is actually a Jeremy everybody's familiar with. He just got a new, new face, mm-hmm. brand new like, face. Like, think of yeah. your friend Jeremy. Here he is. <laughs> it was super expensive. We got him. <laughs> very beardy episode. Yeah. That we're doing this time. I'm guessing it was to get into another Jeremy's uh, iPod 10. Yeah, like I saw it. I'm like, man, I gotta have that. Because. <laughs> With the facial recognition. Because I got the uh, facial yeah. recognition. Yeah. We just released our, our episode <laughs> this morning, and I watched it. Yeah. So last week's episode I watched this morning. Fresh on your mind now. Isn't Fresh it? on my mind. Yeah. yeah. So iPod we 10. A, we did a face-off. <laughs> face-off. Yeah. Now I remember. I yeah. edited that. You were, you were <laughs> never remember that. Yeah, you were. All right. I had to watch every second of the show this time, <laughs> says Dave. Everybody's yeah. on board. Right. Let's, let's go forward. Yep. Sally forth. So uh, what we do when we have a new person is you have to tell everybody about yourself. Oh. Well, I don't do much. If I was an animal, I would be a sloth, maybe a turtle. I have, like, one speed, you know, that kind of irritates people, and I sleep a lot, Uh to the point I think that there may be some level of depression. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody laugh at depression. I mean, (laughs) that's not funny. I mean, you're you're an American, so you have a a right. I have a right. To be depressed. Yeah. Uh, and you're also human, which mm-hmm. gives you another set of rights to be depressed. So, yeah. like, we get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes shit's sad. And that's why we made Talkie Box. Because <laughs> <laughs> shit's sad. Because shit's, <laughs> shit's sad. we got to lighten the mood somehow. Yeah. Got to have some happy shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Where were you born? I was born here. So here? Um, yeah, like at this table. On this table? Okay. I just got this table. From Goodwill. Like a year yeah. ago. Now we know. Now you know the story of this table. You see all Whoa, these marks? Fresh that's face. me. I mean, there were some like stains in these chairs, so that's now understandable know. now. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, well, that's born, cool. born Georgia. Mm-hmm. Never really like. The only time I really leave Georgia is you know, vacations. Never lived anywhere else. Kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. What kind of vacations? Where do you leave? You go to Florida? Yeah, we go to we go to the beaches. And that, stuff. that is kind of lame. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, South Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. No. Never. No. Not no. once ever. That's because North Carolina sucks. You ever been west of the Mississippi? No. Hmm? The, the land is beautiful. Yeah. But um, people are shit. <laughs> Unless you're from North Carolina, then I'm sure you're great. That wasn't <laughs> convincing at all. Yeah, Way to ostracize no. an entire it, state from our audience. It, listen, is okay, I used to drive to South Carolina often, right? Mm-hmm. And any time there was an issue with traffic, it was a North Carolinian's fault. Ooh. Every single time. You finally get up to like the front of that pack of bullshit traffic, you're like... North Carolina plates. There you go. That's the problem. They're not used to driving on straight roads. Or at all, I guess. I don't know. I'm just trying to devil's advocate. You know me. Yeah. I like that. In fact, one time uh, I was dating a girl. She she went to school at Winthrop, which is right on the border of South Carolina and North Carolina. And it's right by Charlotte. And we went over to Charlotte to go to like a movie. And as we were getting onto one of the highways there in, in North Carolina, this dude like rolls up on us, like just right up my ass. And then, like, jumps over, leans out of his vehicle to give me the finger, <laughs> and then and then keeps going like, "Wow, North Carolina." That's well, you you, you actually you gave somebody uh, their own dose of the finger earlier, didn't you? Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, I was I was driving to work the other day. Uh, Jeremy works with me at a day job, um, and uh, I was on my way over there. He has nothing to do with the story, though. I don't know why I pointed that out. Uh, Jeremy. Yeah, um, <laughs> back me up here. Validation. <laughs> you weren't there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, I was, I was crossing uh, a major highway. I had the green light. There was a girl. There was this woman that was coming towards me, like trying to make a left, and she was like, "I can totally make it." And she did technically. I had to slam on the brakes to keep from slamming into the side of her. And so I, I laid on the horn. I gave her the the like five second finger. 
Five second finger. And uh, and I went on my way. Yep. And I've, she went I've, on her way fearing for her, her safety. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Eye full of finger, ear full of horn. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's good stuff. Write that down. People are bad I'm drivers. Down. <laughs> People are bad drivers. Yeah. I look Speak. forward to the day that, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about that anymore. That that'll be great when I don't have to worry about you being on the road. <laughs> no, I was uh, another thing that I did uh, was I was driving. I was going to meet a friend for lunch the other day, and I was driving down 400, very busy highway, and uh, the truck in front of me kicked up a rock, slapped into my windshield, and made the tiniest, tiniest little nick in my windshield. And I was like, damn. Well, at least they can patch that. Ten minutes later, I hear this like click, and like this huge crack came from that little, little tiny nick. So. Like a, you know, $50 fill-in became a $300 new windshield <laughs> that I got today. Oh, man. Yikes. Yeah. But they did a great job. Like, if you if you were to look at my... Are you, you saying that, that if you look at your windshield now, you would have no idea that it was a brand new windshield that replaced yep. a broken one? Not only that, like, the little sticker... You can't even see the crack anymore, can you? Right. They're <laughs> there anymore. But no, they, like, they, they did such a great job. <clears throat> they quoted me an hour and a half. It took 45 minutes. And they even took the little sticker uh, for my next oil change and put it on the new windshield, which was unnecessary because the the ink had actually like come off in the sun. So now it just says new, you know, next service in blank miles. So there's no point in doing it. But that's but they going did a, it. That's going the extra mile though. Yeah. That's customer service. Yeah. We don't want your car to explode because your windshield did. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> yeah. When we. Uh, so when if you ever got a kid new windshield, they're not a sponsor, but Safe Light actually did a great job. I was really impressed. Safe Light repair, and I don't remember the rest. Of the I story. went with a, a local uh, off-brand mm-hmm. uh, when the Hawk destroyed my windshield yeah. that time. Tried to kill you. <laughs> did we ever talk about that story? I'm pretty sure we've mentioned that story oh on the God. talkie box. I almost but, died. Yeah. Yeah. Hawks. Definitely true. They're deadly. I'm um, not kidding. Like I almost got hit in the face with a hawk. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a guy came out, he actually came out here to the yeah. castle and replaced it like in a driveway. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty neat. It was, uh, a slightly different shade. Yeah. Uh, cause they had two different tents back then. There was like a, a copper goldish kind of tent and then like a bluish kind of tent. Okay. And so when he brought the, the new windshield, it had the bluish tint and all of the others were all on the copper. All your other windows? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Well, still didn't affect my driving ability. It right. just There was a slight difference in in tint on the window. That's all. Yeah. They did ask if they wanted to come, if they wanted me to have them come to me. And I was like, is that more? And they're like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, definitely that's more. That's definitely going to cost you more money. I'm like, yeah, I'll just come to you. No problem. No worries. Yeah. So, that's been my week is just dealing with Dave, road bullshit. You just your life. Yeah. Uh, you should not drive series. behind semi trucks. It wasn't a semi. It was a pickup. Oh. Wow. Well, you should just not drive. <laughs> yep. I have to get places. Well, yeah. I'm not, t- I'm not taking Uber everywhere. Aggressive. Always look to get in the front. Yeah. Just always moving forward, Dave. <laughs> Progress. I was going forward at the time. Yeah, but I mean even further forward. Oh. Like even further forward than he was. Right. That would help. Or she, you know, girls try to pick up trucks yeah, too, true. you know, yep. you know. Mm-mm. I've never heard of it. In. So what if as uh, dumb as it gets? What if <laughs> what uh, what else about Jeremy? Let's talk more about Jeremy. I do know this. Jeremy is the second youngest person we've ever had on the show. Second youngest. Yeah. Joey was the youngest. Hmm. He was eighteen, and Jeremy, despite what he looks like, is nineteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you're all inked up and shit. So I just assumed yeah. that you were about 23, 24. That, Being 19 and never going to North Carolina isn't acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Just pass through it someday. That, mm, don't. I'd be kind of out of my way, you know? I mean, what if you were going to uh, Virginia? Why would I go to Virginia? Why would you not Fair go question. to Virginia? <laughs> Virginia Beach? Um, what about it? There are <laughs> beaches Nor- in many states. Um, D.C.? What if you got elected? I, that would be terrible. <laughs> what if I you feel were bad for just everyone involved? Like people would have to listen to me, right? And like you'd make important decisions. Well, and then and I then mean, you could I drive through important. North Carolina on your way to DC. 
You'd probably but, fly at that point, wouldn't you? You could fly. Yeah. So but you'd be like, was, I'm saving the constituency money. If I was elected, I wouldn't be able to drive. I'd have people driving me. Yeah, mm. that's true. Mm. Real world true story. <laughs> Is that true though? Can you I know. Remember? I know the president's not allowed to drive. Yeah, yeah. I know that. But I don't know about senators and representatives, and they can probably drive. Mayors. I don't know. I assume governors. they can drive. Well, I think was it Ford that had like that uh, boat car. The drove. No, it was a uh, LBJ, wasn't it? Lyndon B. Johnson had a. Uh, he was the a, last president to drive. Is that what it was? Yeah, because while he was in office, uh, I'm pretty sure it was either him, I want to say it was him, who, uh, because of what happened to JFK, mm-hmm. like they just stopped letting presidents... JFK wasn't even driving, was uh, he? I know he wasn't driving, but there was definitely something around that time where they just stopped driving because of <clears throat> danger. D- danger. Danger. Yeah. But yeah, it's all I know is world out there. Uh, LBJ had a had a, a amphibious car that he would he would apparently like he would he would go to his ranch in Texas and uh, bring with him like some senator or somebody that he was talking to or whatever, and he would like he wouldn't tell them about it. He would just drive his car into a lake, and they'd be <laughs> freaking out. And then it, it turns out it was also a boat. Well, I uh, <clears throat> I got to be honest. I'm too curious not to look this up. Mm-hmm. That's pretty dope. Yeah, <laughs> right. President LBJ amphibious car fourth uh, <laughs> selection. What what did you? <clears throat> I just put an LBJ AMP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So LBJ uh, amp. Let's check some images here. Okay, this is making for great radio. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is a <laughs> that is an it's the amph amphicar. Yeah. <laughs> the amphicar. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm sure you're throwing off the. Oh yeah, the lighting on is that, that big a, time. Is that a German flag? <laughs> Splashy. It is. That is a German flag. Black, red, yellow. Yeah. It looks fascinating. <laughs> anyway, I want one. <laughs> so whenever you get elected president, you're gonna have to get an amphibious car that you're not it's allowed to drive. Amphicar. Well, I was thinking just like you know Congress or Senate or uh-huh. something like that, and then you can still drive because either way, nobody really cares. Amphicar. But why? Go, why settle there? Go big or go home. I mean, you got to start somewhere. No, you got to at least get your right own like top. TV show, <laughs> like Shark Tank or something like that. <laughs> Shark Tank, ha mm-hmm. That should be, if, if that's not their slogan, it should be Shark Tank, ha Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It should be. Write that down. <laughs> you gotta just not you to them. or do well, it. Well, it's I don't too care. late. <laughs> Hashtag like Shark Tank, just, Here's a new idea for you guys. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag Shark Tank Bruhaha. Mm-hmm. Now, you're a gamer, mm-hmm. right? I know that because you're Mass Effect tattoos and because yeah. we talk about it a lot. Yeah. Um, did you hear about this EA bullshit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This EA bullshit, yeah. EA bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Electronic arts. Uh huh. We've all heard about this, so we don't have to talk about it, I guess. No. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Our audience is fully caught up they probably on everything are. we're about Especially to say. Especially given that this show is going to air like next week. Yeah. No, yeah, it'll all be. Water under the bridge by that by point. By the time it airs, they will all be experts. Yeah. Right. Well, just in case. Okay. Let's go ahead and let, let's at least give in. them right. our opinions that they don't care about. Okay. So breakdown is uh, there's a series of games called Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, started 15 years ago or something like that on like I think the PS2. PS2. Yeah. Oh man, and, that was a great game. And they were great games. It was like a squad based shooter multiplayer thing, couch multiplayer, couch co op, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, and then, that was a thing. Yeah. And then uh, in recent years, EA, Electronic Arts, got the, the rights to distribute again to remake these games, I guess. Uh, Battle, Battlefront 1 did well. And then uh, Battlefront 2, not as great. And people were pissed off. Well, even then, the Battlefront 1 didn't do as great as people had thought it was going to do. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. But uh, like, a lot of the big problems that come from the second one is... <clears throat> There are a lot of multiplayer issues, yep. but also uh, they released betas, mm-hmm. and in the betas, like you could purchase things at you know a reasonable price to right. fully enjoy the game. You could unlock these heroes, yeah. And then when the game actually drops, mm-hmm. you can't get like Luke Skywalker or, or Darth, Darth Vader, Vader yeah. without pouring like massive amounts of time and money into the game. Right. 
Now, like, so it's like you can either pay to play mm -hmm. or you can spend 40 plus hours yeah. to earn the credits you need to unlock the character that you bought the fucking game yeah. for. And it sort of goes against what <clears throat> what they had touted in the first place. That this was going to be like no DLC. It was going to be like you get the full game, the full experience. You don't have to pay for extra, which is technically true. Mm -hmm. except, you don't have to pay for extra. Being you just have to... as fuck about it. Oh, yeah. And they, they said they, they upped the prices. And when they were asked about upping the prices, they said, well... The prices in the beta were lowered mm -hmm. so that everybody could experience the whole thing. Right. Now we're going to give you the real greedy prices. Yeah. And, and like microtransactions mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it actually earned them, like a response to Reddit. Yeah. Uh, earned them the most downvoted comment on Reddit ever. Yeah. I, 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 I don't get on Reddit much, but I know that uh, you get an upvote, it's a point. You get a downvote, it's negative a point. And last I looked, they were at negative 405,000 points, which is phenomenal, actually. <laughs> they got... That damaged them big time. Yeah. And uh -huh. it's so funny that you're standing on a forum mm -hmm. can, like, damage your brand that much. It's a lot of people. <laughs> yep. Well, since then, they actually, since all that stuff went down, uh -huh. they uh, reduced... The, the in-game currency price for the heroes by 75%. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Across okay. All the, the board. Across the yeah. board. Everybody, everybody got a 75% drop. So instead of, you know, <clears throat> 60000 or whatever to buy mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader, it's only 15000 now. Well, good for them then. Yeah, they at least, at least listen to their fans. Yeah. So and... that's the power of capitalism. Like, right. as capitalists, EA gets to set these standards and these prices yep. and then as consumers we get to say hold the phone no -uh. we're not okay with any of this right you go up yourself and then they're like oh shit <laughs> we didn't mean for that to happen yeah. we have <laughs> lost our favor we don't want to lose yeah. our brand and all this you know by being the greedy <clears throat> capitalist even though we we understand why they are right now, um, another thing that irritated me about this is I, I, I found this out today. Um, now, I used to play, like, Call of Duty and, and Battlefield and stuff. I know, I know you used to play Call of Duty and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and in those games, you would unlock new content by getting the in-game points or currency or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way you got that, like, experience or currency was by doing well in the game. Like you play a match, if you're you know if you're on the winning team, you get extra points. If you had like really good kills, you get extra points. If you had a lot of kills versus less, you get extra points. Um, and the more points you got, the easier it was to unlock the stuff. In this game, it doesn't work like that. What like you pay for power? Well, yeah, but like apparently in this game, if you start a match, everybody in that match gets the same amount of points at the end of the match. Doesn't matter if you won, doesn't matter if you lost, doesn't matter how well you did. You could literally start a match and walk away. And when you come back at the end of that match, you got points, just like everybody else. Okay, Ooh. so that would just, that that it's a participation trophy. At that point. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it and it promotes farming at that point too, yeah. where someone isn't even going to participate. They're yep. just going to load their character in, go off and do something. Load their character in, yep. go off and do something, and just so that they can just keep. But if you're an active player, now you're looking back and you're like, oh, there's like four people that are just standing AFK. Yeah. Pulling these same amount of stars but that I am for trying to save the complain. universe. People are going to complain about that stuff too, and it's just like when people complain about online cheating in multiplayer games and stuff like that. They they make a change every time, every time, right? They you guys watch, change. right? <laughs> every time. You were saying <laughs> they make a change every time, <laughs> every time. Yeah, I should probably turn mine down too. <laughs> yep. But well, mine's not the one that went off. Did you accidentally summon me? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I sure did. Oh, Siri. Shut up. <laughs> uh, like she's a genie. Yeah. <laughs> summon me. <laughs> right. That's creepy. Jeez. It's a little creepy. That actually reminds me. Uh, my sister actually has an Alexa at her house, and apparently her son accidentally ordered a basketball goal. <laughs> Like now, I mean, we've done that before, where we've had people's Alexa. Just from watching our show, people have had their Alexas like buy things for them. Alexa, order me one more toaster, please. <laughs> uh, the good one, top of the line. Thank you, Alexa. Purchase. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, apparently, uh, he 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 just went to go and uh, put it on like his Amazon wish list, 
And it, it, like suddenly it's like purchasing. And he's like, oh damn. <laughs> so too late now. Yep. Yeah, but we so uh, so EA is is among a basically a <laughs> just the way that stuff is going to go on from now on. Like because people can respond instantly, and because of the way the internet mindset, that hive mentality works. Yeah. Like as soon as it starts building steam people are going to jump on and have opinions about it even though they've never even played right like uh, what's happening right here like currently i've i've played the the battlefront the the playstation 2 mm -hmm. i played that and then i played a little tiny bit of the battlefront on the like the re-release yeah i have not ones. i uh, did but I don't really care. Legitimately, <laughs> like it doesn't affect me, but I know it's affecting a lot of people. Yeah. And EA has a lot of sway in the gaming community. The number of sports games that they have, I right. think. Uh, are they? Did they buy SquareSoft? I don't think so. No. Okay. No, I could be wrong. Square, that's so. Square Enix. Yeah. That's, okay. That's my bad. But anyway, a lot of stuff and yeah, things. I mean, they they're a gaming giant. Like they're one of the the bigger. Companies yep. out there, so and that's the most upsetting thing about it is they got all that power. Mm -hmm. Like you pointed out, the Mass Effect thing, the new one just came out and everyone was super excited about it. Yeah, they just destroyed it. Like they didn't put as much time into it. They made it a really crappy game. Like right. all this money they put into it, and like people still complain about how like all the animations are just trashy, the facial animations, expressions. Yeah. They're garbage for how much money they spend into it. And then they saw how much like backlash it got. Mm -hmm. Just canned it. Like no more anything's going for it. They're not like gonna update it. They're not gonna really you know, put anything else into it because everyone's just like this is not a good game. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really like So no more about. DLC. Yeah. They're no. not gonna fix the problem just be like, all no. right, well we released it, it's done, so you'll have to wait for the other ones. They just Bleh. they just <laughs> threw a blanket over it. So that's the issue is that they have corporate businessmen making decisions instead of gamers yeah. that care about the end product and you know like uh it's 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 kind of upsetting yeah to... i feel like you need both involved though because i mean you're talking about making money on something and capturing a new audience as well and that's what these businessmen want is to capture new audience so they're the ones that are marketing the game and like helping to pull all these extra funds into it so it can become a really big beautiful game but they do stick their hands in too many pots, I think, and yeah. kind of ruin the fun for everybody else. Uh -huh. They they try to, I guess, include too many people and wind up giving this sort of uh, almost like ah, I just there's no heart in it anymore. The game right. lacks the heart that the original concept of the game had, and so now I just feel like I'm playing of a, a ripoff version of something that I cared about at one point. Right dumbing it down and things like that. I mean, and there are some games that do get dumbed down to appeal to a wider audience, but still end up being really good games. And I think uh, Skyrim is a case in point of that. Like, fantastic game. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls, love Skyrim. But if you play Oblivion, and then you play Skyrim, Oblivion is far away more complex. It's it There's is. a lot more to it. Um, not to say that there's not a lot to Skyrim, but... In terms of like the gaming mechanics and the systems and the levelings and all that other stuff, it's definitely a more simplified version. Yeah, kind of a streamlined you, version. Yeah. yeah. And they, they did something similar with Fallout 4. And they I did. don't mm -hmm. care with the leveling process for Fallout 4. I, I like the old style of leveling. Just like I like the old style of, of uh, leveling in uh, Oblivion and even... Morrowind mm -hmm. before that. Like, I want my acrobatics up. I'm going to hop around the, the Imperial City for a few hours and my acrobats are going to go up. Exactly. Exactly. I I enjoyed that. Uh, the I play Fallout 4 for the story, but I really feel like the leveling at this point is almost moot to me. Like I don't feel like I'm really affecting my character when I level and put points mm -hmm. into something... I, I think I, I enjoy the leveling system in Fallout 4. The perk system was fun. It was very specific, but it all kind of evolved from the same place. Like, you you had Oblivion, which was incredibly complex, and then Fallout 3 came out, and it was still fairly complex, but...
But then they added in like a few perks and then New Vegas came out and that's when they really like dove headfirst into perks. And then when Skyrim came out, they're like, all right, well, we'll just rearrange the leveling system and now each level they'll get to decide something and they'll get a perk. And then, well, we'll just carry that over to Fallout 4 too. And now you strictly level through perks. Hmm. But I mean, it, it, it can create a more unique character because you're not just boosting individual stats. There are special abilities and, uh, you know, statuses and stuff like that that you get out of it. So it can create a more unique character, but I agree that it's not as interesting a leveling system as it once was. Like it was nice that you could put per like upgrade your special skills. How you could how in the older Fallout games and stuff you could like once you had those set skills they were set. You know you couldn't do anything about that. Your character is based off that. That was a nice thing about Fallout Force leveling up is like oh my strength isn't high enough. Well I'm just gonna go level up a couple times, put a few things into strength. But other and now than that, I'm strong. Other than that, it's just like. All right, I'm putting levels into this just so I can, you know, make a better gun or something. It doesn't yeah. really, like, do anything to your character if you're not trying to. You yeah, know. I mean, but uh, that's one of the things that you know some people had an issue with when it first came out was that because there's no level cap like there was in Fallout Three, which was always a big, like, I got why they did it, hmm. um, but there's no level cap, so you can basically just max your character out in every way imaginable if you play yeah. the game enough. Whereas in Fallout 3, like, they did kind of try and give you that progression while at the same time giving you that limitation with that level 20, level 30 cap. So, all right, well, you've been developing your character, now you're at level 20, pff, character you're stuck with. Yeah. Like, he is who he is, go for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Skyrim, you know what comes out on Friday? Something I'm very interested to try. Is it the VR thing? It's Skyrim VR. Yeah, it's it's coming out. It's it's almost finally here, Dave. Dragons. That's how you're gonna feel. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really care. No. Damn. No. See, I love the game, and I was talking to Jason about this. Now, VR uh, or Skyrim? You don't really care. VR Skyrim. Oh, the combination of yeah. the two it's means not, nothing to you. If 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 they made a new game, absolutely. But I. I mean, and I've talked about this before, I'm not a big fan of the remastering bullshit. Mm -hmm. And like, here's the same game, and we're just going to do it slightly different. So, Especially Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and it, it comes down to that. I'm, I'm not saying it's not a cool concept, but it's still the same game. But see, like, my, my thought is, I really want to have a great gaming VR experience. I haven't had a game, a VR gaming experience yet. Mm -hmm. Not even, like, gone to Best Buy and trying out a headset or anything. Yeah. Um, and I would like to try it, for me, on something that's tried and true. That you know is going to be good. I know it's going to be good. Yeah. Because I, I love the game as it is, so now I get to experience in a different way. Right. Whereas, if a VR game's coming out, I don't want to run the risk of spending, you know, 300 plus some odd dollars on a VR set and then get the game and be like, oh, well, this is shit, isn't it? <laughs> like, I'd much rather, like, if I'm going to make the investment, I'm going to invest in something that I know I'm going to enjoy yeah. and then just see how much more I can enjoy it. And that's yeah. probably what the, the people who control those decisions thought. Like, let's go ahead and release it with a game that we know sells, that people have an interest. And that way, it's sort of incentivizes them to get these accessories, to get these peripherals. Uh, but, and then once they have these peripherals, hmm. they're going to be stuck with them. They're going to be looking for yeah. more VR-style It's going to give more developers, when you can say there are this many we sold VR units. sets, yeah. VR units out there, they'll be like, oh, well, now we can actually invest in VR. And you will see uh, an increase in VR games and, and content out there and I think Skyrim's going to help set it off. I think now, you're going to have people that are going to make it more mainstream because it, of this giant yeah. game. Now, while while I agree with you, and that's probably how it's going to go, hopefully it doesn't go the way of, like, the Kinect and the Virtual Boy and all those other kind of niche things where they're like, this is going to be the next big thing. And, it, and then everybody's like, okay, cool. And then it sucks. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I had the same thing with the PlayStation Move. I got the yeah. PlayStation Move. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so cool. Mm-hmm. And there was some cool content on there. Yeah. But it was mainly like party games, playing like disc golf mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. bocce ball and stuff like that. But the tech wasn't never... where we wanted it at the time. Right. And there wasn't really a good enough application for it. Like they had the one thing with the rifle yeah. that was okay. Um, 
but I think what it really needs is these peripherals need fantastic content and yeah. software in order to get it lifted off the ground. I think it's really smart. It sucks that it's taken so long. It's really smart for them to release Skyrim on PlayStation VR because that's going to put that peripheral in more people's hands, like mm -hmm. Jason said, and now developers are going to invest more time and energy into that content, which will give us better content, and that's going to help re like lift that industry up. Because right. right now their other options are a gaming computer. Like You have to spend thousands of dollars to get a VR set up on a gaming computer, yeah. whereas... Now you'll be able to spend six hundred and get the full VR experience. True. Yeah, you know, I will say this: as much as I've talked shit about remastered games and stuff in the past, um, and I've even talked a shit about this thing, and it's uh, Final Fantasy VII. Mm. Uh, I actually saw like what they're doing with it, and it actually looks fucking amazing. It looks really good. I was actually really impressed with what they've done. It's something that they've been kind of teasing people with for years. Mm -hmm. Like, all the way back to when the PlayStation 3 came out. The PlayStation 3 came out, like, one of their demos was the opening scene with the train of Final Fantasy VII. Everybody was like, oh, are they going to make one? Are they going to make a Final Fantasy VII remake? And they're like, mm, we're not going to say. <laughs> it's a secret. Yeah. And then over the years, they just kept asking, kept asking. Right. And then I think it was like a year and a half ago, they announced that they were going to do a Final Fantasy right. VII remake. And now, a year and a half later, we see our first trailer, and yeah. they still don't have a release date. Yeah. But I... I it might never I saw it, and it's been so long, I don't actually remember the story of how Final Fantasy VII goes. And so, that I'm actually now looking forward to playing this game. That's the one after with years, Cloud, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and after Sever years of, of being like, Something I don't give a shit, wrong. now I'm like, I kind of give a shit now. Yeah. So. You have, you'll have to update. I think it's going to be a PS4 exclusive. It probably will be. Yeah. And at some point, maybe I'll make some money off doing this once we get some sponsors and make some money and you people buy our merchandise. And we have merchandise, things. guys. Um, you want to buy some merchandise? <laughs> it's good It's good merchandise. Yeah. Like this. So uh, you mentioned last week mm -hmm. that you went to see Thor, Thor. of the Ragnarok. Yes. Ragnarok. Uh, and Justin and I were jelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so you should be because it's a great movie. So we went. Yeah. And we saw it. Yeah. Jeremy, have, have you, you yes, seen yes. it? You seen it? Yep. Okay. All right. So good. Spoiler free. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought it was great. I loved it. Best uh, horror movie. Uh, not quite as hilarious as you had led me to believe. There were a lot of jokes. But that's because he's a cynic. But you yeah. know, I'm I'm hypercritical, yeah. especially of comedy. And All right. So you kind of raised the bar a little too high. So Korg, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, that's the that's, that's the, the Kiwi, right? Guy. That's the, the New Zealand director. Yeah. Right? Hey, we're we're all gonna go escape on this spaceship. <laughs> Wanna come? Wanna hop on? <laughs> Wanna hop on? Yeah, it's good stuff. Piss off, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved the New Zealand accent. It's always yeah. it's like kind of chipper, you know. <laughs> and nearly <laughs> indistinguishable. I believe there's about you know fifty thousand people in New Zealand that Wait. all sound exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the things that, that I really liked about it... It's not quite racist. <laughs> no, no. Is New Zealand a race? Nationalist? What if it is? I don't know. Well, then it's racist. <laughs> um, it had a very retro feel to it. Yeah. Like, I, I felt nostalgic. Even though it was all fresh and new, it still yeah. it had, a, like, a, a tinge of nostalgia feel. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. some of the, the buildings and the, the vehicles on the trash planet mm -hmm. kind of reminded me of, like, Transformers, like early 90s Transformers. Yeah. Like yeah. In the Late 80s, schemes. early 90s. Even yeah. the, there, there was actually, in the movie, there was like, wasn't there like a garbage planet on Transformers or something? There might have been. In the original animated movie? I, I think it don't was. know, Dave. In fact, Look I'm pretty up. sure there was a Weird Al Yankovic song playing as they were on that planet. But the, the, wouldn't doubt it. The music, like the, the theme as you're coming in and going out is very like... Uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s techno yeah. kind of a The feel. Led Zeppelin was a good touch, though. Funny story about that. Uh, just earlier today, I saw, apparently, Jack Black um, from... Uh, Tenacious D. From Tenacious D, also School of Rock, called out Chris Hemsworth for stealing that song from him because they play that song in School of Rock. And uh, Chris Hemsworth responded and was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> we stole that. You stole it first, but yeah, I stole it from you. And and then uh, Jack Black like called a a, a a jam off, 
<laughs> and so, uh, and Chris Hemsworth like, I don't know what that is, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it sounds I, yeah. like great PR. Yeah. I need I, to see it. You're going to beat me mm-hmm. unless I get K. <laughs> if I were if I were Chris, I would take his K. Yeah. But there, I, I felt like there were a lot of good jokes in there. It was mm-hmm. they definitely you went in knowing it was going to feel light just in the first like few minutes. Oh yeah. Of the movie, it's like all right, they start off they're talking. Take a very light approach. Right. To a dead guy. I mean. Spoiler. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn it. Spoiler! In the very first five <laughs> seconds of the movie, he's talking to a dead guy. Deal with it. <laughs> what a terrible person you are. It starts on a light note. It does, yeah, it's yes. like, well, well, we're going to keep this. It's not too serious. Just go yeah. with the flow. Then Jeff Goldblum as kind of a villain? Yeah. Eh. More of a dick. <laughs> More of a dick. Yeah. Yeah. He He's not really... He's, he's an antagonist he's only dead. in that... Uh, he just kind of pisses people off a little bit, uh, <laughs> but he uh, Jeff Goldblum was Jeff Goldblum as he, he always is. I was delighted by Jeff Goldblum's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum character. Yeah, I, I feel like very way, Jeff Goldblum. The way that Jeff Goldblum plays roles is someone's like, "We're gonna put this makeup on you, and then you just go be out there. Just go be Jeff Goldblum, yeah. uh, except your name is this." Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't think about how a character would say the line. He thinks about how he Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Would say this line if he were this character, and then he does that. So uh, uh, I'm sitting there, right, and uh, 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 I'm the grandmaster. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's pretty much how it goes. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's it's there's like a slight question uh, in every sentence, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Any, I know in acting, you know, we talked about we'll how talk you're about supposed this. to discover your lines, like when you're. When you're reading your lines, you need to discover them like a real person is coming up with their thoughts right. to speak. Uh, and he does that like <laughs> to the next level of like almost as if he is just searching the ethos <laughs> for Boy, his... of, of what what am but, I gonna say? Uh, but he does uh, it he Master. does it like <laughs> in the middle of the sentence <laughs> as opposed to the beginning. It's not I'm the grandmaster. It's I'm uh, the uh, uh, Grandmaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Got it. <laughs> Nailed it. But yeah, he's, yeah. And and a lot of people compare, you know, his style with like Christopher Walken because Christopher Walken is guilty of the same thing. Like, yeah. we need you to play this role, but you're gonna be Christopher Walken <laughs> with this guy's name. Right. Well, I'm not gonna think about how this guy would say this line. I'm gonna think about how I would say this line. As this guy. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Your impression? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> he does a lot. We don't we don't portray nearly as uh, but Jeff Goldblum is not ready yet. I don't want to be no. judged on that. It's still no, in its late. infancy. I'm judging. You know, I'll judge you on you. Mm. But yeah, saw that. Delightful. I think people will enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, the it's not uh, it's not the best Marvel movie, but it is the best Thor movie. I feel by mm-hmm. far. Yeah. Um. And I and I enjoyed. The, I know the Thor movies get a lot of shit, mm-hmm. but I actually enjoyed the other two. I, mm-hmm. I I did too. The one thing I, I noticed about this one, like especially as we were going through it, is I mean there were a handful of Guardians of the Galaxy references, mm-hmm. but it had that same feel as the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It's like it's foreign. It's Spacey, there's yeah. good music, it's funny and quirky. Like, it felt like they were trying to take one, some of the stuff that made Guardians of the Galaxy so successful and pull it into this movie, right. and it worked. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It was very good. Because while the, the first two were more about story building, they didn't have a whole lot of pure entertainment value like a lot of the other movies do, yeah. whereas this one was like a well-rounded movie. It wasn't mm-hmm. just about pushing the right. Infinity Stone storyline. It was about uh, character development. It was about the you know the jokes and the humor. It was a whole full piece. So. Yeah, I did miss uh, Kat Dennings' character though, uh, Darcy mm-hmm. from the first two. I always enjoy I, I enjoy her as an actress actually, and and also that character that she played was really funny to me. But obviously she wasn't going to show up in this. But still, I missed her. Yeah, yeah. And she's pleasant on the eyes. Mm-hmm. She's got kind of a quirky funniness to her. Yeah. Um, she was also in Big Mouth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she plays uh, the Nick's sister. sister. Yeah. yeah, Nick's sister. That's the one. Yep. 
Have you watched Big Mouth yet? No. I've been telling you to watch Big Mouth for months and you haven't done it. I don't listen to you. How dare you do disobey <laughs> a direct order from Dave? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, you another, be. another good movie is I've been watching the uh, the old premium networks recently. Whoa. The HBO's, Big the Showtimes, the mm. Stars. Uh, and they have recently, recently, recently. released um, <laughs> uh, Love. Split. Yeah. Which is in the latest M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Uh, you know, his, his movies with a twist. Yeah. Uh, now, tell me, so I've seen several of his movies. Most of them, name them. have been crap. Um, uh, signs. So, signs crap. was crap. Uh, Six Sense, not crap. Good. Yeah. That Great. started his career, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Six Sense nope. and, and Unbreakable. Well, should have. Unbreakable. Unbreakable came after Six Sense. Did it? Yes. yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Six Sense and Unbreakable were, were good. Signs mm -hmm. was crap, if you think about it. Yeah, it was crap. Um, I think about it. Like, if you just watch it as it, as it is, you're like, okay. But then, like, when you actually think about what happens, you're like, nope, that's stupid. That movie with Marky Mark and the trees killing everybody? Ah, that was apparently crap. Happening. Crap. See it. it was not good. Lady in the Water? Apparently crap. Apparently crap. Uh, you hear enough about crap movies. So what, so what I'm getting that, though, is I've... Uh, Dave has, has mentioned three movies that he's actually seen. One of them was crap. But no, I also it, saw uh, Last Airbender, which was also don't crap. Say oh, I don't know if that counts as an M. Night Shyamalan movie. He directed it. Yeah, that that's count true. As a movie. <laughs> it was, bad. but it's not one of his movies. Yeah. It was like a, well, we need a big a name director that we Shyamalan can get for paycheck. cheap because everybody's tired of the crap put movies he's putting out. Yeah. Let's get M. Night Shyamalan to do it. He'll do it. He He'll do it to, for like work. sixty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do it. Do I get a per diem? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten in weeks. Yeah. Well, the one he did recently, the uh, what was it, the visit, or mm. that one was pretty good. I haven't seen that one. I wanted to see it. Yeah. What, what's that? Or, like the grandparents go yeah. crazy or something. Um, it's about like these kids. They go um, spend the weekend or the week with their uh, grandparents, mm. but then the grandparents are just crazy. Oh, mm -hmm. what is dinging? We've been over this, Dave. Yeah, but I want you to explain it every time it happens because you're interrupting the show. Yeah, and then when we stop to explain it every time, you're interrupting the show. Yep. So, continue. All right, so Split, <laughs> right? It's got... Uh, it's got... Um, McAvoy? Yeah, the guy James in the McAvoy. wheelchair uh, with the bald head. Uh, what's his name? Offensive. Xavier. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's, the one. It's got Professor Xavier in it. Yeah, and, new one, not old one. Yeah, yeah. and he's, uh, he's apparently got... Uh, 23 personalities. That's a lot. He's got a, a multiple personality disorder or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, m the biggest disappointment uh, that I had personally with the movie, because it was a decent watch, okay. uh, you don't see 23 personalities. How many do you see? Uh, maybe like seven or eight. Okay. And mostly you see like four. Right. Um, but legitimately... If they're gonna keep telling me that he's got twenty three personalities throughout the movie, you want to see. Him I want to <laughs> see an example of every single Just personality. Just count them out. Because a, that's a huge stretch for an actor. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to see an actor in a single film. Right. Like give me twenty three different, yeah. like portrayals of someone. Now he he does a decent job in the portrayals. There he does a kid one, which is a little off. But he's also a grown ass man that doesn't have multiple personality right. disorders. So I feel like he did a pretty good job, all things considered. Like all the different characters he was, you actually got to see. Like I felt like he had very good distinction. There were good nuances. They were very to the characters that you do yeah. see. I the hedge the clothing the, helped. The kid, I felt like his the accent that he used was a little the lift, like the way he had a yeah. lift and stuff. Now, real quick, they said I shouldn't take you in here. Slightly off topic, but still on topic. You you've seen Legion, right? I have. All right, I haven't seen it, but now, I know Paul Bettany's Legion or the no the the, the Marvel show. Yeah, the right. Psycho X Man. Yeah. Now that <laughs> in that one, he also has multiple personalities, correct? No, that, that's not how they play that. No, no, no. Oh. He has multiple personalities, but one of them is a demon. Spoiler alert. <laughs> 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 then he's ruined it again. <laughs> All right, they've had plenty of time. Because that's how Legion was in the comics, was he had multiple personalities. That's why he was called Legion in the first place. Um, but that's not how they play it in the show? Not not initial. I mean, you... Uh, there's. I can't... I don't want to give anything away. Okay. But they don't give him mer multiple personalities per se. I'll, I'll okay. just leave it at that. So I was going to ask if, if that guy... 
did a great job of of conveying those personalities better or worse than James. No, Madden no, he, did, he, did, he definitely takes on different. There's some serious schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get the like bipolar tendencies and stuff like that, but yeah. but you don't see him like portraying okay. like oh I'm this like oh what were we just talking about like why am I in this room now because I've been this other person for X amount of time like that okay. doesn't now, happen now who did a really great job in that show and I think we we said this last week it's Aubrey Plaza right Aubrey Plaza <laughs> <laughs> oh dear at Aubrey Plaza at Aubrey Plaza <laughs> you great job <laughs> we think you're terrific hashtag let's get lunch. Write it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing it down. So I would recommend yeah. Split. Okay. Uh, the twist at the end, I'm not going to reveal it. I know you mm, want me to. What a twist. Uh, but it relates to other works. Of M. Night Shyamalan? Of M. Night Shyamalan. It does. Yeah. So Possibly I thought or I, negatively? I thought it was I, well done. I thought it was well done. Okay. It was a nice little... Twist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, oh, I also saw and I recommend two thumbs up. What was that noise about? <laughs> that's, that's. I don't, know, I don't want to know where your thumbs are that's going. That's thumbs that noise. make when they go up. <laughs> uh, when they go up, what? specific things, Jason, and I don't want to know what those things are going. Cardboard in. tubes filled with Vaseline. <laughs> so so we anyway, didn't know. Oh. Um, oh. so anyway, what? get out. No. No, seriously. You. <laughs> this this movie, Get Out, yeah. uh, it's got, um, oh, what's the actor's it's name? It's about murderous rapist, right? Or murderous racist. Yes. Not rapist. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. rapist. There's, there's definitely some racial tension involved, and I feel like the movie did amazing, mm-hmm. uh, working like through the, the racial tension the way it should be, uh, the main actor handling the scenarios... Uh, they played towards a couple of like black stereotypes, but they do it in a humorous light. Uh, there's basically a funny sidekick, but he's not actually with the guy mm. in the movie. He doesn't, you know, he, he's he's sporadically placed throughout the movie through like telephone calls and stuff like that. Okay. But as the guy gets further into like this messed up scenario. He's calling his friend, and his friend's like, I told you not to go in there. You know, like, yeah. that's sort of like, why do, why do black people get... What are you doing? How would how, how, how that go again? I told you not to go in there. Okay, good. You know, you know how, like, uh, black people are always like, oh, they always die in the horror movies first because they're doing something stupid that, you know, we would never do. And so I, I just think it's funny that they, they play towards that in the movie, and they sort of, like give you these nuances of like, oh, these are stereotype jokes, but they're used appropriately, especially in this movie that's entire theme is like, screw that, we're breaking out of these stereotypes. Right. Uh, so you you get behind the hero of the piece right off the bat, yeah. and it's he's real easy to support, you're rooting for him the whole time, and by the end of it, you're like, down with those white people like oh <laughs> i cannot wait until this gets real bad for all of them <laughs> and maybe it does maybe it doesn't i suggest you watch it and, then, um, and then find out if it goes bad for them and find out how it goes but it's it's well worth watching okay. get out um i recommend it hmm. all right white people <laughs> so. i don't know how you meant that the way you said that <laughs> <laughs> like, i'll leave that open to people. interpretation <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I tried to watch La La Land. Yeah. Too much singing. Really? Yeah, a lot of decent choreography, but I just really couldn't get behind the singing. Yeah, it was just too jazzy. It was just too yeah. That was one of those big award-winning movies too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, a- a- Academy. Awards. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of Oscars. It took the Academy. Yeah. I know what uh, the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, is happening soon. Is it really? The, the yeah, next, I guess it would be. They already did the nominations, didn't they? Yeah, they did nominations. Now it's like the 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 voting is going on. You can you can go to the website, whatever it is, and, and vote for 
who you think is going to get in. I think Bon Jovi's up for it this year. Remember last which, year when I guessed the exact... Uh, you say people? guess, but you got it in order, and I yeah. still don't feel like you guessed No, that. I totally guessed it. Yeah. Are Nailed you going to do it again? Are you gonna, you want you want to look uh, up the nominations and yeah, uh, I haven't even seen the nominations, Jason, but I can, can tell make... you what the masses <laughs> will want because I'm 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 hip. I'm well, it's not in. it's not based on the masses. Like the people get to vote, and they and they take into consideration the one that gets the most votes, but they don't necessarily have to go with it. Because hmm. like, a lot of a lot of it they choose based off of like uh, the times mm -hmm. and like. Uh, cultural responsibility and yeah. things like that. Like, and, and the thing we learned last year is that this this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it's a privately owned place. Like, this is just some family that was like, yeah, we'll do a Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And then they get to randomly vote however they want. And it's no longer just rock and roll. No. No. And it hasn't been for several years, actually. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready? Sure. Nominations for the 2018 induction of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Stop it. Bon Jovi. Uh -huh. Heard of him. Kate Bush. No, unfortunately. I don't know who that is. <laughs> the Cars. Yep. Yeah, the Cars was up last year. Depeche yeah. Mode. Also last year. Yep, yep. Dire Straits. Okay. Eurythmics. Mm -hmm. The Jay Giles Band. Wasn't that last year too? Yep. I think so. Yeah. Judas Priest. Not last year. LL Cool J. Not rock and roll. <laughs> MC5. Yep. The Meters. The Moody Blues. Radiohead, Rage Against the Machine. Oh yeah, Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan, Nina Simone, Sister Rosetta Tharp, Blink Ray, and the Zombies. Which were last year? Zombies were last year too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, some some big names, some that I don't know, mm -hmm. um, and some that I know have been on there multiple times, like the Cars and Depeche Mode. Yep. Um, I would Jay say uh, band, this yeah. is the year for Depeche. You think? I also think Dire Straits. Dire you Straits think bon and Bon Jovi. Get it? Bon Jovi. Get it? Um, Nina Simone. Yep. You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Um, Maybe not LL this year. No. Uh, now between Rage, or I got Radiohead. respect for Radiohead, mm -hmm. but. I'm a 90s kid, man, and I'm going to say Rage had more impact yeah. on culture, on no, rock and roll it's culture. Not, it's not like one can get in, the other one can't. Uh, I think it is, actually. <laughs> it think, feels that way. I think, I think they, you know, there's only, they have categories in their head, like mm -hmm. old rockers that we need to get in <laughs> at some point. Yeah. Like, See, now, when, when transitional, it comes to Rage Against the Machine... I love their music, but I feel like if you listen to a 45-second clip of any Rage Against the Machine song, you've heard the whole song. You don't and feel that way about Radiohead, though? Not necessarily. No, Radiohead has, actually has some uh, varying tones to their stuff. Uh, and, and I know that because I've been to two of their concerts. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. So I always just get fancy high, high well, melodic. Dragon? No. Go ahead and put <laughs> your pinky up, It was the same show both times. Go ahead and put your pinky up. <laughs> You earned it, yeah. yeah. You earned so let's it. let's take a vote then. All right, between Radiohead and Rage Against the Machine, if you could only let one in, if who do I you... can only let one in, it'd be Radiohead okay. of the two. If Jeremy, I, I don't listen to either of them. Yep. Well, you have to fucking pick. <laughs> uh, Radiohead. Radiohead. I feel like I would say Radiohead, but Rage is gonna get it. So you you feel like <laughs> you would say Radiohead, <laughs> but yes. you also feel like that I wouldn't would, matter. I would say Radiohead. But I believe that in the the end result yeah. is going to be Rage Against the Machine. I also uh, believe that Rage Against the Machine yeah. will win it. I think I think they're going to win it. I would personally pick, pick Radiohead out of it, but they're, yeah. they're 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 they've just always been a more relevant band. Mm -hmm. Like Radiohead, not to say Radiohead isn't relevant, but Rage Against the Machine has always had more relevance, even you know throughout the years, well past the point that they stopped touring. Their yeah. music has. Had a message that felt relevant, yeah. Um, so I feel like that relevance is what's going to get them in more yeah. than just their portfolio. Right? Yeah, that rebel, rebel, yell. Plus, they do so much, you know, like work. Uh, Zach, uh, what's his uh, Zach something or another yeah. is the lead singer for Rage, and he's he's done so much like. He's a charity. politician now, isn't he? I, I believe so. He's done all kinds of charity work, all kinds of I stuff. So. Like, I he, know he was in jail for a while. 
And so was Nelson Mandela. That's true. All right. And he became, what, president of South Africa? Yeah. You don't know. Nelson who? Didn't he die in prison? <laughs> no. That's, <laughs> that's the Nelson Mandela effect. Uh, it's like yeah. it's it's like that genie movie with uh, Sinbad. You remember mm. that one? You know, I know. Like, apparently, somebody found a videotape of no, that didn't. movie. That's what I heard. No, they didn't. I don't know. No, you're remembering it wrong. I'm not remembering that <laughs> wrong. I remember reading that article. It was probably something fake. Yeah. It probably was. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way uh, that uh, that Sinbad dresses. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He's, he's never played a genie. He just always dresses like a genie. Right. Very, very glossy gold pants. Now, Shaq, very baggy. Shaquille O'Neal has been a genie. Yeah, he's also been a superhero. I mean, he was in a movie where he's supposed to be a superhero. No, he was a superhero. Mm. Was he in Space Jam? No. No? Are you sure? Are, Are you I mean, am, I, am I sure? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I know, obviously, MJ. Uh, mm -hmm. well, Jordan, that MJ. Michael Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Jordan. Charles Barkley. Not Jackson. Oh, yeah, Barks. Yeah, Patrick Ewing. Sir Charles, yeah. So there was no Wait. Shaquille and... Do you not have a nickname for Patrick Ewing? Hmm? Patty Pats. <laughs> <laughs> He's at, at Patrick Ewing. <laughs> Patty Pats. Yeah. Patty Hashtag Pats. let's have lunch. <laughs> yeah. Space Jam. Yeah. Space Jam, man. That's a hell of a movie right there. Yep. Yeah. Got uh, that, I got that one in my room, actually. So um so at nineteen years of age, uh what is your favorite movie? That is that's a tough one. Okay, um, um, I know it was The Notebook, uh, but, got me. <laughs> but after The Notebook. Uh, after The Notebook. Um, a walk to Remember. All right. <laughs> that's actually not a bad one. Let's just move down the list, move past Steel Magnolias, <laughs> then what? <laughs> I got to say, it'd probably be um, either Donnie Darko or Napoleon Dynamite. Okay, nice. and those are... <laughs> Yeah, they're complete. Oh, yes. <laughs> the other way. I thought you were going to say Pootie Tang. Pootie Tang? <laughs> that's a great movie. That's on my list. <laughs> Pootie Tang is <laughs> separate time, my damn it. Mm -hmm. Sign that pity on a runny kind. Why'd no. I take? <laughs> they know. <laughs> you guys, they know. if you don't know, you never will. Now you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Google that, Pootie Tang. I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> All right, make sure you, you turn safe search on. When you look up Pootie Tang. <laughs> or don't. Well, I mean, it depends on how adventurous you are. Yeah. So live so, life on the edge, you know? Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite movie, then? Oh, I'm old. Yeah, I know. That's it, not what I asked. Yeah. That's not the name of a movie that I know. <laughs> it could be. Uh, I, I couldn't even... I'm so hypercritical, I couldn't even pretend to start narrowing it down. Like, if, if you want to say, like... I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Okay. Justin? <laughs> I just couldn't. Just blown away by that. I'm, uh, I've seen so many good movies. Like I've seen good thrillers. I've seen good dramas. I've seen movies that have actually made me laugh out loud. I've seen movies that have made me afraid to go to the bathroom. Like I've seen movies that have had true impact on me, and those are the ones that I appreciate the most. Now, what movie in my mind sets itself apart from all the others? I, I just, I'm flat. Like, I don't know. Um, Justin? I would, <laughs> I don't have a favorite movie per se. Yeah. Like, there are tons of movies that I like that I feel like I can set apart that, you know, are normally a little more obscure that people haven't seen. Not as many people have seen, mm -hmm. but over the years have become kind of cult classics. Like, uh, Lucky Number Slevin. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. But it's just a it's a it's a, a grouping. It's a bundle of movies, a bunch of movies. We know uh, what bundle means. Yeah, they're different. <laughs> we talked about this. Yeah, it's an inside joke uh, between me and Justin. Uh, but it, they're neither <laughs> none of them crawl their way to the top. You okay. know, Lucky Number Seven's great. Uh, I've always enjoyed the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Trilogy, those are good. The trilly. Yeah, that that trilly. <laughs> um, let's see. There's a lot of good uh, Batman. The original Batman with Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. 
So good. That's a good one. That's probably one of my favorite comedic movies of all time. Like, probably the We're, we're definitely going to get a clip of Jason going, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, man. That Arsenio Hall. <laughs> hey, we're at the end. Things, Are we? Things that make yeah. it go, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I got that. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Let me drive that point home. Arsenio Things that Hall. make you go, uh. yeah. All right, Jason, what'd you learn? I learned that I have never tried to narrow down my favorite movie. Yeah, uh, I should have gone first. Yeah, should have gone first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I am lost in a sea of excellent movies that I'm just playing through. Like, oh, do I like this one better? And and I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Justin. I learned that I can't remember whether or not Dave named what his favorite movie was. Empire Records. Empire Records. Yep. I learned that Dave's favorite movie is Empire <laughs> Records. Yeah, just take that last thing that was said. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, what'd you learn? Classic when you first show ever. I uh, hate being asked what my favorite movie is because I have to think so hard on that. Yeah. All right. You bastard. And I learned that everybody already knew the EA story and we didn't have to do anything about it. <laughs> mm. Done. It's just all over the internet, yo. Know. It is, it's huge. Yeah. People that have never played an EA game are like, fuck EA. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the game. <laughs> oh, I should write that one down. Did, did we already do that one? I feel like we did. It's in the game? Yeah. I don't think we did. No? Well, write that down. Gonna do that some other time then. Yeah, what, some way other time. Yeah. Or next no. week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give, give them a uh, reason to watch one more time. If you or someone you know is uh, into was it uh, graphic design or animation, hit us up at uh, gmail. Uh, what is it? Talking Box Podcast at gmail dot com or yeah. on Facebook. We will answer messages to either one. All right, <laughs> and then just real quick, I have the the hashtags. Hashtags of, of the, the day. day. Yeah. Hashtags of the day. We've got a uh, hashtag eye full of finger, ear full of horn. <laughs> We've got <a> hashtag <laughs> Shark Tank brouhaha. <laughs> Hashtag, hashtag let's have lunch or hashtag let's do lunch. It's up yeah. to you. Do and then fast cool and then finally thing. hashtag fuck EA. Um, <laughs> so that's what we got, guys. All right, like it. I think hashtag spread fuck EA to the is Twitters already working its way around. Yeah, because us. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, you're, you're welcome, welcome EA. <laughs> way ahead of time. Trendsetters. Yep, we're trendsetters. Mm -hmm. Jeremy said it first. Yep. Shark Tank brew, haha. <laughs> let's do it. Have a great night. Good night, Good night. everybody.